Folks, Fernando doing another video for Tomorrow Survivalist, and in this video we're going to be talking about what Latin American preppers are getting ready for, what they are preparing for, and I think there's a lot that you can learn from that, from people in that situation across Latin America. Before I go on uh, the infomercial part of the video, and it is going to be relevant to some of the things I'm going to be discussing, my first two books, uh, The Mars Survival Manual and Bug It Down and Relocating, both of these are at a very good discount right now in Amazon. If you don't have this one, uh, which is maybe the, the best selling one that I have of them all, the most popular one, you definitely want to get it. It's never been cheaper than it is right now, like 14 bucks. 13 bucks for this one, and you can get my latest one for like 21. So the three books for like 50 bucks, I think it's a fantastic deal if I may say so myself. Now, this comes to this is relevant to the video because this is the the book that uh, a lot of folks in South America and Latin America are asking for. They've uh, been asking me for for a translation, which I'm in the process of, of finishing right now, wrapping it up. But they want to get prepared. A lot uh, a lot of them were just, hey, come on, do it for uh, for us. We we really need this sort of thing. You know how things are over here, and I absolutely know how things are over there. Uh, but especially these last uh, times. While American preppers have been going into a little bit of a, of a bromance politically with Trump and kind of relaxing, in South America things have been going south pretty fast for a lot of folks. Uh, so that is what this video is about. You, you learn a lot. Um, the, the Spanish, uh, I have a Spanish channel which has uh, been going great in popularity. Folks are, are liking it a lot. Uh, it's a back and forth. You you share information with uh, folks. They they give you input as well. You never stop learning. So, I uh, I have here six of the main things I find people in South America and Latin America preparing for mostly. Uh, number one is political. You know, one of those things that is often uh, disregarded in survival prepper channels because it's not popular, because it's not and not it's not nice, and people get offended. Um, no, no matter what side you take, someone gets offended, and you you lose viewers, and it kind of sucks. You get insulted. All of that good stuff is avoided by just not talking about it. But you have to talk about politics. You have to know what's happening in Virginia right now. You have to have a uh, a good view as of what's looking in the horizon one, two, three, five years for, from now, how things may be looking. Uh, recent events in South America uh, have been mostly triggered by political causes. Uh, in Argentina, it's been the you know rebirth of the Kirchner, which I've never thought I'd see in my life, never thought they would be in power again, yet they are. Um, in Chile, it was uh, something similar with a lot of, of pressure from, probably uh, pressure from Venezuela. There's been infiltrators from Venezuela in Chile, that's pretty much a fact, but in Bolivia as well. The, the Bolivian president, Evo Morales, he wanted to uh, perpetrate himself indefinitely in power, you know, kind of like, um, l l like Putin, and it, it just it went south very fast. He ended up escaping the country. Now he's found asylum in Argentina with his socialist buddies. The point is, guys, you have to be aware of what's happening. You have to know how to read uh, the media, understand the side, the angle they have. Uh, uh, socialism is, is such a, a horrible thing, a very cruel thing. Uh, around the world you see how it acts and how it, it destroys uh, it, you know, entire populations with, with poverty, with you know, lack of, uh, of knowledge. It, it, it attacks kids mostly. They, socialists love going after kids and I don't mean that in a, in a spooky kind of way. It's simply a fact. They are very very, uh, they're very good at going after you know institutions of education, universities, schools. Always when when a socialist gets in power or gets even near to power, the first thing he's going to be going after is going to be education because he knows that he's planting that little seed, you know, that little poison in in, in little kids' brains, and eventually th those are going to be turning into votes. They're a lot smarter than many of us on, on the other side, more of a center right side, where we 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 kind of oh yeah yeah you. Know, you learn whatever you know. Life is going to be beating, beating you around, and you'll you'll figure things out yourself. Uh, w while many on the right have that kind of attitude, go go out and, and work and figure things out yourself. The socialist goes, you know, puts his arm around the shoulder. Come, I'll teach you about stuff in life, and starts poisoning the ears of of 
of young kids, even little kids, from a very early age. I don't want to make this video super long, but it's important because the political aspect of preparedness is, is key. Most of these things going south in, in Latin America are mostly political. Even in Mexico, where they're struggling a lot with, with the drug cartels, it's, it's a huge mess. It's a political mess, mostly. It's something that has a political root about allowing corruption to degrees that you never thought they would be imagine, imaginable. You, you allow a, a drug trafficking because it is a financially beneficial for some folks to a great degree. You know, All of those things have uh, a, a root cause located in politics and government. So it's important to be uh, aware of that. Number two is the uh, food aspect. One of the first things that lots of folks in Argentina were posting about uh, that I was keeping up with uh, as soon as the, the Kirchner won uh, the, the election and it was clear they're going to be getting back in power is everyone run to the supermarket and stock up on food. It was was not nearly as bad as it's been before. I, I remember the, the rioting and the, the looting and the, the crazy of, uh, of 2001. This was not it. Um, but people definitely rushed to the supermarkets and started buying more stuff, specifically food. They wanted to have a good supply of food. Uh, some of them you know, were, had some already, but they stocked up a little bit more just in case. In terms of, of currency, also you know, buying the last few dollars you were allowed to get before the, the socialists came back in power and told you, no, no you cannot have. It, it is incredible. I mean, I'm doing this video and I cannot believe it, but... Uh, they they have a way with words. You know, they they would say that the previous guy uh, was uh, you know was an evil capitalist pig that was taking your money. Now these guys are take, taking even more of your money, but they're talking it uh, uh, that it's a, a charitable a charitable donation and contribution. You know, so they, they label it with some bullshit and they're taking even more money than the guy on the right that was supposed to be the, the evil capitalist guy, Macri, right? Uh, just the way it is, point is, food is key. We all know that, but just it's worth reminding. Not, you know, not any kind of weird crap or expensive stuff. You know, just basic stuff, uh, you know, rice, lentils, pasta, the kind of thing I've always talked about. That is what most folks over there were running to supermarkets and stocking up on. And number three would be defense. You know, it is a point that I've always insisted a lot on. It's I, I've never met anyone that died of hunger or thirst. You know, starved to death. Uh, I've never met anyone like. I know a lot of cases of people that you know got killed because of uh, violence and crime and the inab in inability to defend themselves in those situations. That is something that I do know that has happened to people in my uh, neighborhood, in my overall community. Not one of them starved to death, not one of them uh, died of, of thirst, uh, shot down, victim of crime, that happens a lot. That's why I've, I've always insisted so much with this stuff. And it is, it is pretty revealing to see uh, people, you know, now that I'm having more interaction with, with, with Latin American audience uh, than I used to, uh, the, the kind of things they want. They, they want something basic that works. These, these things, guys, the, the Glock that you have right next to you, these things are precious in Latin America. Your Glock is precious. One of these costs a thousand bucks in Argentina, you know, pretty much across uh, Latin America, a Glock is about a thousand bucks, 900 bucks, not any less than that. It is, it is at least twice of what, in the used market, is at least twice of what you're used to in the United States. And this comes to a point also of, you know, when we talked about healthcare in, Amer in, in, in the United States, why is healthcare in the United States more expensive? And it's simply because people will pay for it. You know, people will, will pay for it. If that same company had to operate in a more restricted economic uh, population, they would just, the, the price is always dictated by market. So why is it that a Glock, because it's the exact same Glock everywhere on the planet, why is it that this one sells brand new for a thousand bucks or 900 bucks in a gun store in Latin America and it sells for half of that in the United States where everything is supposed to be cheaper? Because of the market, because people will pay for it. That's the point. People will pay for it. And that is telling you something. It's telling you that this kind of thing is 
precious, it's valuable, it's important. People want it because it makes them safe when things truly go to hell, when things are really dangerous out there. It's not a matter of having fun, going to a class, looking tactical or any of that of that nonsense. It's about really having a good tool for self-defense. One, a lot of the comments, it's very different talking guns with Latin Americans compared to talking with, with you guys in the United States or some other you know better off country. Uh, they want stuff that above all, it, it, that works. It has to work. It has to be reliable because if not, what's the point? So something like this would be ideal uh, and the, it, it has a premium price because of that. But something, for example, in Argentina, a, a, a Versa pistol, that is also highly regarded. The guy, and that's my advice as well for anyone in Latin America that asks for it, they tell, yeah, Fernando, I see your, your, your nice Glock, that's fantastic. I cannot afford that. I can afford a, a, a Versa. Okay, go with the Versa. I've shot the Versa for many thousands of rounds for many years. I've used it in classes, and it's a good gun. It's not a Glock. You know, the Glock is. It's nicer, it's better overall, uh, but n nothing wrong with that sort of gun. The point is they want things that work that are not super expensive. Uh, stuff like a, a Mossberg shotgun, which you may be taking for granted. A Mossberg shotgun is a prized precision in Latin America in general. In Argentina, it's kind of like a, yeah, I got myself a Mossberg 500. I, have, I got myself a, a premium, high quality, American made shotgun. That, that is valuable. That is. And that is something that you know you can trust your life on because I guess that what I'm trying to say is it's so much more um, palatable the idea of these things not being toys but being for something that is likely to happen because of the level of danger and, and crime and insecurity and overall social unrest they you just end up with a very different perspective about all these things even stuff like EDC you know something like, like a, a Leatherman uh, um, a Leatherman multi-tool something like this for EDC which would be the budget version this is the the sidekick so this is the budget version for you guys in, in the United States uh, for someone in Argentina, this is a little investment. This is a lot of money and it's going to be costing what I was explaining before. It is always the market that dictates the price. This is going to be costing three, four, five times as much as it costs uh, in the United States. A Glock knife costs a hundred dollars in Argentina. They've told me this several times, time and, time and again. Uh, you know, Fernando, yes, your Glock knife is, is very nice, but it's not a budget knife for us. It's a hundred dollar, U, a hundred US dollar knife for us. That's the price for it because it's quality, because it's good. It's something that people want. So the market says, okay, pay for it. Even if you're dirt poor, pay for it because that's what we are, we're asking for it. Oh, go buy something easier, cheaper, something more affordable. But if you want premium quality, they are charging a lot for it. Um, this is the same across most Latin American countries. Um, even stuff like ammunition, Fernando, what, what's good ammunition for self-defense, you know? No, not what, what's the latest, coolest, no, something that works well. What would you say, like, you know, like a, a good a gold dot ammunition, that, that's a good recommendation. Someone was asking me this just today. Um, number four, and this is a topic of uh, my second book, which is, has definitely been my least popular book, my second book, Bugging Out and Relocating. I've written these things because this is where I come from. So this is what I, I've gone through myself. This is the, the things I've experienced and learned over the years myself. And this is the kind of things those folks over there understand uh, and are uh, experiencing themselves firsthand. And one of the most popular questions I'm being asked all the time is, Fernando, how the hell do I get the hell out of here? How do I leave? Because I, I just cannot take this anymore. This is just impossible. It's unbearable. Cannot keep living like this. And I've been in that same place. These guys are in that same place as well. Some of them are you know, younger guys, maybe have a few years less than I have, or maybe my same age, but just got fed up now, you know, maybe a little bit uh, after I did, or, you know, we are all different. I, you never have to judge anyone. We all have our different paths in lives. So, but this is, this is important because, um, how do I leave? Where do I go? What's a good place that gives me what I'm looking for? And someone right now was asking me about, someone in, in Europe was asking me about, I, I'm fed up with the European Union, this evil socialist European Union. I want to go to South America. Is Chile, Argentina, and Bolivia a good place? Those three are borderline civil war. Chile is already... Uh, 
pretty much all has been in a, in a civil war in just a, a couple of weeks ago and it's still an extremely fragile situation. Bolivia had the president escape uh, Venezuela. We all know what that is. And they've been having <laughs> infiltrators across different uh, parts of, of South America starting trouble, uh, a lot of them probably in, in Chile themselves. Uh, Argentina is uh, about to become Venezuela. Uh, I've never heard the, the, the word, the, the phrase, it's becoming Argenzuela as much as I'm uh, listening these days. So it's a very unstable uh, situation. You have to know how, how to do this properly. And this idea that, uh, you know, the guy in Europe thinks he's going to be better off in South America. No, that's simply not the way it works. But the guys in South America, these folks uh, are looking for ways to to leave and how is it that you go about that where do you go um what are the, the things that you're going to be looking for? It's not the same for everyone. If you have kids, it's a very different situation than if you're a, a couple with, without kids um, past your, your 50s or if you are a, a young single guy. It's all different and there's a, a proper method, at least the way I've done it, the, the way I go about it, is doing a proper a objective, you know, try to not be passionate about any of this and make a smart decision. Uh, so yes, it is one of the most common questions uh, I'm getting. Uh, number Number five is a lot of stuff regarding improvising and making and do-it-yourself projects so as to save money, so as to get uh, you know, improving tools or, or making your own knives or, um, or making your own uh, you know, card multi-tool or whatever it is. A, a lot of these things are uh, becoming very, very popular lately. They've always been in Latin America. People in Latin America are more, they have to be more resourceful than the guy in, in the developed country that just goes, you know, buy stuff. Even if he, you know, he considers himself poor. Someone that thinks of himself as a poor person in the United States or most developed countries, they're not really poor compared to third world standards or pretty much the rest of the world actually. So while a lot of uh, the average Joe, the, the middle class or even the lower middle class can just go and buy stuff, that's it. that middle class in, in Latin America in general has to be more resourceful as of you know, improvising stuff, making stuff themselves. Yeah, uh, I'm not buying a rocket stove, I'm making my own and welding it myself. So it's very cool, very interesting to see lots of these things. A lot of these things, pretty much everything that I'm talking about is uh, has been uh, the... Um, the idea behind my latest book, my last book is Street Survival Skills. I struggle a little bit with the title in terms of is it better urban survival skills or a modern survival skills because it's not just you know stuff in the street. It's about a lot of improvising stuff, a lot of self-defense, uh, but mostly the stuff that guys are asking about right now in South America are the, the topic of my latest book. And that's why they're asking this one to be translated because it's the one that as of right now they would find the most useful for the a current situation. Finally, um, one of the things you see a lot as well, and I cover my, a lot in the book, is home security. How to make your house safer than it already is. In, in Latin America in general, those standards of security are already pretty high. The, across South America, every house has burglar bars, has a solid door, because if not, it's going to be get it gets kicked down within just a few days if it has your typical American door, which is so easy to kick down. That's not possible in South America, you have to have something better. If you're a little bit better off, maybe middle class, a little bit better, you, you get yourself a bulletproof, reinforced uh, door that has metal sheets on both sides and it has a metal structure on the inside and it's pretty much bomb proof. That's the door I had, that's the door a lot of people I know have. And all of these things, how to make your house um, more secure and you know, improving that as much as possible um, uh, with different layers. It's not just the bars, the, the fence, the door, alarm, dogs, lights, you know, anything that you can stack on top one of the other so as to make it a harder target than your neighbor. That's basically how the game works. And yes, these are all things that uh, I'm getting asked a lot. In terms of, of crime uh, on the street, defending yourself, we talked about this for, before, home security, also, in terms of social unrest, there's quite a bit of concern also of, okay, what, what do we do if rioting starts again? It's been happening in, in Chile, it's happening in Bolivia, it's happened in Argentina before, and it could most definitely happen again because what the current government, you know, that was always, that's the, the old government, the, the Kirchner is back in power with these socialists. They have, I, I don't even want to use the word socialist. They're downright communist mafia. That's the only word that comes to mind. They don't even pretend to having any social, you know, the, 
the, the, the, the farce is already over, we already know what they are, and I'm amazed that they managed to get back in power. But at the end of the day, it was like 40-something percent of the population, and some of the guys in Argentina were telling me, you know, this is not what most of us chose. You know, it is true, most of us did not choose that. Unfortunately, enough of them choose that so that they, they're back in power. But it's also true that not most of, of them did not choose that. They, the, the center and right was just too divided, and that's how this ended up happening. Guys, my books available on Amazon, uh, as always, the links are going to be there below. If you want to click those, the, um, they're pretty complete and, and full, packed full of information that you'll find useful, no doubt. That is what folks in Latin America are preparing for. That's what folks in many other parts of the world that are not as as well off as developed countries uh, are mostly interested in it based on my experience over many years in survival and preparedness. Guys, have an awesome day. See you on our next video.